I see lots and lots of people doing this and I did this and I've wasted combined probably a year or more. Hey, what is up guys? This is Brett here from brettdev.com and I'm coming at you from a very, very different location today. Well, I say very different. It's still very close to my house, but um, I'm obviously not at my house. So at my house at the moment, there's construction going on all over the place, left and right, behind my building, my neighbors. It's just absolutely mad. There's so much noise there. So I figured, where can I get some peace? So I've come out to the jungle, basically, um, or a waterfall that is not actually running right now because it seems to be uh, a bit dry, but a waterfall that's right next to my house. Uh, my house is on the edge of the mountain with the jungle, and I thought this would be a nice different place to shoot, right? A nice different place to record. So anyway, um, on that note, if you're new here, if you've never seen my channel before, um, on this channel I talk about working online, moving to Thailand, recording videos in the jungle and stuff like that. Um, if, like I say, if you are new here, don't forget to hit the button below and subscribe. And if you are interested in working online, moving to Thailand, all of that good stuff, then check out the link in the top corner of this video because that is going to be super, super helpful for you. Now, just grab my drink real quick. Check there's no bugs crawling in there. In this video, um, there is a topic I want to discuss. So I want to talk about, so I want to talk about the five biggest things that I regret living in Thailand. Um, that doesn't include getting my head burnt right now by the sun. Um, so obviously when I first came to Thailand, I had this dream of coming here, um, being a digital nomad, working online, all of that sort of stuff. Now, these videos are kind of difficult to make because, I mean, there could be other things I could think of later on down the road. Um, and these are going to be my big things, okay? The five biggest things that I regret. They may not be relevant to you. They probably will be relevant to you, especially if you follow this channel, because we'll probably agree with similar stuff, otherwise you wouldn't be following me. Um, but yeah, so they're not, you know, hard and fast things, but these are five of the you know, things I would have done differently, you could say, right? So they are regrets. I mean, it's, it's, it was a hard list to make because, you know, if you move into Thailand, I don't really regret much at all. Um, so I guess it's kind of things I would have done differently. Could call them regrets, whatever. But um, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. That's what I'm going to run through. My top five, yeah, things I would have done differently. I don't know how, if you can hear this or not, but... There's so much, so many birds and like all these sounds. I don't know if the mic's picking it up. The, the lapel mic's pretty good for cancelling out background noise, but I'm, it's so loud, I'm pretty sure some of it's going to come through. Um, there's these birds here that sound like chainsaws. and <laughs> it's crazy. I, I come away from my house because of the construction, and now I'm in the jungle listening to birds that sound like construction tools. <laughs> Fuck me. Okay. Um, yeah, so the first one, guys, the first one on my list is... The one thing I regret about moving to Thailand, and these are probably going to go in order of, you know, not that important to more important. Um, the first thing I regret would be probably not traveling around enough. Um, I've been to many places in Thailand. Um, I've been to Ho Hin, Koh Lanta, Krabi, Koh Phangan, Samui, um, Udon Thani, Bangkok, Pattaya. I've been to a lot of different places in Thailand, um, Chiang Rai, loads of places, but when I first got here, I kind of had my heart set on living here in Chiang Mai, probably because of the videos I saw online and stuff like that. And I'm happy I did it and all that. But one of the things I kind of regret and I probably may do differently if I came here again would be just to um, like look around more, not necessarily travel around more. But when I go, I would go to places and I would, you know, when I first came here, I stayed in like seven or eight different condos here in Chiang Mai. There was no reason why those seven or eight different condos could not have been in a different city in Thailand. You know, I could have done a month in Ho Hin, a month in Chiang Mai, a month out in Isan. Um, I could have gone all over the place. And I just chose to stay in Chiang Mai probably because it was, you know, trying to start an online business and stuff. You need to be a bit focused. You can't be traveling is a little bit distracting. But I mean, I, I might have found a place that I think is way better than this. You know, I might have wanted to live a life by the beach. 
I don't know. I mean, I can still do those things, um, but you get comfortable, you get stuck in a bit of a rut and, you know, you tend to just stick around. Laziness, really, laziness. So that's probably one of the things I would have done differently. In my first year here, I would have just floated about a lot more. Not just, because you can't really get a good feel of a place if you just go there for a week or two. You have to, you know, get go to a place, get a free month of condo. And then go to another place, get a three month contract and another place, get a three month contract. That's one of the beautiful things about Thailand is the fact that, you know, you can literally just rock up at a condo building anywhere and just stay there. So, yeah, that's that's um, one of the things I would have done differently. The second thing I would have done differently, and this is not a big deal. Like I said, these are going to start off small and get bigger. Um, is I would have got my affairs in order as soon as I got to Thailand. And by that, I mean, really simple. I would have opened a bank account. A Thai bank account, I would have um, probably secured myself a long term visa. I would have, rather than doing the visa runs like we did back in the day, when you're only here for like two, three months, you've got to bounce out and come back in and all that. Um, I also would have bought a motorbike. Yeah, opened a bank account, bought a motorbike. Just things that make your life easier, you know? I mean, I know so many foreigners that have been here for years and they still don't have a Thai bank account and they're paying all this money to draw the money out of the ATM and they're jumping through hoops and all this stuff that is just totally unnecessary. If you just get here, you just do the basics. If you have the basics, you know, like a bank account, it's gonna make your life a lot, lot easier. You can do like mobile banking on your phone. Um, if you have a motorbike, you can get around. You know, lots of people wait and wait and wait and wait to do this stuff. And I did in, the, in my first year or two. And you just think all that time you wasted, you didn't even need to waste. You could have been doing something productive, you know? So that'd be my second tip for you. If you come in here, guys, then and you, and you know you're going to live here and stay here, then get your affairs in order, right? Just open a bank, buy a motorbike, get all those things out of the way so you just, you know, you're good, good to go. Now I just changed the camera positioning um, because my head is literally getting burnt here, guys, so I'm trying to get under this tree. Uh, what a disaster. What a ridiculous thing to do. Anyway. <laughs> the third thing that I regret coming to Thailand and what I would do differently is... When I first got here, I made I was coming here to try and be a digital nomad, to try and start a successful online business so I could make my money online and I wouldn't have to, you know, um, go and live in the West and all that stuff. Now, when I first got here, I made the assumption that everybody that I met was successful just by virtue of the fact that they lived here or that they could somehow help me um, in achieving what I wanted to achieve. Um, big mistake. Um, you know, I came here, I was 26, 27. Didn't really know much. Uh, you know, a lot of the people that live here are a lot older. So you'll meet people in their 40s and their 50s and stuff. And in the co-working spaces, you'll meet people that are younger, but they won't necessarily be expats, right? They're just going to be digital nomads trying to start a business also. And, you know, the problem you have is any friends that you make in the co-working spaces, um, most of them aren't successful, right? They're here trying to be successful. So by hanging around with them and thinking that they're going to somehow help you or that by having that crowd of friends is a good thing, you might actually... Um, you know, it's not going to help you. It's just going to waste your time in a lot of cases. Like I'm all for networking and stuff, but um, yeah, like when I got here, I had digital nomad friends and I had expat friends, but neither of which had any influence over my success and my longevity out being out here. Right. That ultimately came down to me and any time looking back, I was spending time with these people thinking that it was a benefit. It was going to benefit me in the long run and it actually didn't. Okay. Um, all that time I spent um, out going out for beers with people, talking ideas, drinking coffee with people, listening to other people's ideas, um, nothing come out of any of it. It was like the only thing that enabled me to live here long term and enabled me to be successful online was the time that I spent by myself putting the work in. Um, yeah, that was it. You know, hanging out with other people didn't didn't help at all, really. So yeah, don't waste your time um, or don't assume that people that you that you meet out here just because they are here are necessarily going to be any benefit to your long-term goal. 
and that a big a big part of that is you know a lot of digital nomads don't have a clue what they're doing anyway um or if they do know what they're doing and they're getting they're getting on and they're being successful with what they're doing it's not necessarily beneficial to you okay so this leads me on to my um and same with the expats the expats are established they make their money half of them are retired half of them work online but they are they've got their own thing going and it doesn't necessarily mean they can help you okay so this is my fourth point you want to be if you're coming here to start an online business and you're coming here because you want to work online and things like that like you don't have a lot of time right so you might have budget you might have savings and all of that stuff you want to be consuming information that is going to help you get to your goal as quickly as possible and by that that doesn't just mean hanging around with different people that can help you get to your goal but it means you know all information you consume that can help you get to your goal so i'm guilty of this and i see a lot of other people doing this as well um especially when i first got here when i came here like do you remember the book the four hour work week by tim ferris that kind of inspired a lot of digital nomads to start um kind of doing what i've done and um oh, sore foot on this rock um so yeah the four hour work week it inspired a lot of people um and you know i'm guilty of this like i say if you have a limited amount of time, if you have like one year and you have one year's worth of savings, you need to be absolutely maximizing that time to achieve the exact goal that you want. Okay, if your, out, if your end goal is, you know, um, I wanna start a web design company and you know in order to do that, you have to achieve one, two, three steps, then you shouldn't waste your time reading books like the four hour work week. You shouldn't waste. I mean, I found this all the time. Like I would meet so many digital nomads that had read like all of the big popular books um, and they would like geek out on the books that they've read. But those, but they, they had no success in their life. They had no business. You know, they were just consuming information. They had a short window of time to actually succeed. And they would just consume information that was non-relevant to their goal. Okay, so like I said, I've done this before as well. Like you need to not do things that, I mean, these, other, these books that come out and stuff, they might be interesting, but it's not gonna help you. Like, I mean, I've done this. I was reading, I remember I was reading books like um, this Jocko Willink guy on, on YouTube. It's a book about leadership and I thought the guy was interesting. So I s sat there for a fucking few weeks and read his book. I don't need a, to read a book on leadership. You know, like I have certain things that I'm trying to achieve. I should have been reading a book about, which I'm reading now, on how to grow your YouTube channel, right? So what I'm doing right now is YouTube. So read a book about YouTube, right? So I regret doing that. I regret wasting a lot of my time being distracted by, you know, shit that's not relevant to the goal, okay? If you are trying to, um, I don't know, whatever it is you're trying to do, there's a book there's a course, there's some kind of information that will directly impact your exact goal that you have to achieve in the next 12 months. Eliminate everything else and only consume information that is gonna give you an actionable thing that gives you a direct result, right? If you wanna learn to code, read books about learning to code. Don't read books about fucking mindset. Don't read books about working four hours a week. Don't read um, books about finding your inner peace and your why and spirituality and the traveler's journey and all this shit. No, just read a fucking book on how to program in that specific language that's gonna give you use cases, gonna give you examples, tutorials. Once you've making an income, once you've got your business up and running, if you're just making like, I spoke about this in the video before, you're just making a thousand bucks a month, thousand, two thousand bucks a month, you're comfortable, then go and read all your books about your, you know, your inner peace in life and your four hour work week and all that stuff. I see lots and lots of people doing this and I did this and I've wasted combined probably a year or more just consuming information, going down trails, going down paths, pursuing ideas and, you know, um, mindset stuff that's just non-relevant to my goal. All right. So I guess that would be the fault. That's kind of I'm losing track of the numbers now, but that's one of my big regrets. Yeah, just and that's one piece of advice I'll give you guys if you are coming here to start up online, just be very laser focused on what you're doing. Um, finally, <laughs> I know it was that four, five, six, I'm losing track, but finally, number five, the biggest thing I regret is not moving here sooner. 
all right? The, the fear of how's it going, it's not going to work is just ridiculous. I always say just to people, people go, oh, what if it doesn't work? Well, what if you lose your job in a Western country and your rent is a thousand pounds a month and your bills are a thousand pounds a month what do you, and you become homeless and you freeze to death because it's freezing in England. Um, if it goes wrong in England, you're a lot worse off than if it goes wrong here. And uh, all you need here to survive is to not get eaten by a snake. No, all you need here to survive is $600 you can get by on that. It wouldn't be a comfortable life. You wouldn't have a good life, but you'd be living, you'd be surviving $600 to a thousand bucks. You know, it's not a big ask and it's not as scary as you think. Um, come with some savings, have a plan. I've spoken all about this on other videos on my channel. Um, but yeah, not doing it sooner, having a fear of something. And it's, it's not really that scary. Once you get out here, you actually realize, oh my God, um, <laughs> maybe if, maybe you're so scared because you're in, in an environment of fear. When you come here, you'll realize actually life is easier than where you currently are. You know, um, people have this fear and it's of starting a business, traveling, you know, living as an expat. You'll work it out. You know, it's not as difficult. It's not as difficult as you think. So I, I wish I'd have come here sooner. I, I came here when I was 26, 27, but I should have come here when I was 22, 23. I could have done the exact same thing when I was 22, 23, and I'd be 27 recording this video right now, not 33, right? Um, so yeah, wasted five years, pretty much. Wasted five years in England, overpaying for shit, and working my ass off for nothing. But, still come here, good job I didn't waste another 20 years and come here when I was 57 or something like that. And if you're 57, then what the fuck are you doing? Um, <laughs> sort it out, you've waited long enough. Um, yeah, so that's it guys. I hope you like this video. It's a bit of a weird thing. I'm going to, I'm going to have thrown some clips up throughout this recording anyway, show you where I'm at. Cause I'm in, I'm literally in the jungle. Um, my head is going to be on fire. It's burnt to shit. If you did like the video, um, you're probably going to like this video. And like I said, if you are interested in working online, you do want to start an online business, then check out this link. That's going to be very helpful to you as well. I may bring you some more videos from the jungle. I'll be bringing a hat or an umbrella next time. Um, Cause like I say, this is only five minutes from my house. If the construction continues near my house, I'm going to have to, or I might bring you some stuff from different places, you know, find different spots. There's a big hiking trail up here. Maybe I could record a video at the top of the hill. I don't know, but that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Those are my five biggest regrets and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.